All right. All right. All right. Welcome everyone to the High Performance at High Noon call. Thank you for joining me at this new location. Um, I was just saying that I had to move everything from my other organization onto this organization. Um, so, you know, under my Josh Johnson consulting brand. And, um, and so, yeah, so I had to move some stuff over. So thank you for joining me over here. And um, we're still going to Rock and roll. We'll see who joins um, with the new link, um, but we'll we'll keep it moving. So I am Josh Johnson, work life integration strategist, and this is the high performance at high noon call. It happens every Wednesday at um, noon at <laughs> noon Mountain Standard Time, two p.m. Eastern. Um, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And um, and I actually want to talk a little bit today about like the space of intentional living, right? And so I talked about like work, work life integration, how I started this call, all of those things. And that absolutely matters. But what I want to start off by talking about is why work life integration? Like that's a long title, a fancy way of saying, how do you live and work and really just kind of live a life that you love, right? And so how did I get into this space? Well, it really started with the concept of intentional living. And that concept of intentional living is a values-based lifestyle that helps you get clear about how you want to live so that you have the freedom and the agency to live on purpose. So oftentimes we have people who have a, like you have a thing that you want to do, but your everyday life doesn't really allow for that. So, um, you know, when I talk about the word agency, like how many of you know what agency means in this context, but when I went, you know, in a social context, right? Like you having the ability to control what it is that you do. And so often we don't feel like we have the ability to control what it is that we do and and so then we are caught up in our day-to-day -day life and we have this vision, we have this dream, but we don't get to do that and live intentionally. Well, the way that I started learning about living intentionally was through integrating what I do with my work and how I want to live my life and where those things met and like creating that synergy in that space. So I want to kind of break that down a little bit more and I'll probably start to break that down um, a little bit more consistently as a part of the call, because I think it matters as people are trying to figure out like how and where do they fit inside of this space, right? And like, why do I even care about work-life integration? Well, work-life integration is really, really, really only about how you live a life that you actually want to live. Not like some far off thought about what would be nice, what everybody else calls successful, what do I feel like? How do I want to live? And then how do I make money while I do that? Live on purpose while I do that? Create impact while I do that? How do I, you know, include the friends and family that I want to, you know, um, that I want to regularly interact with and regularly engage with when I do that, right? So all of those things are included inside of the overall scope of like work-life integration. I am a mom. So how do I include my kids who are here, by the way, hopefully we won't hear from them but it's a snow day in Denver. So, so the kids are home, but like, how do I incorporate my family, you know, inside of my lifestyle? How do I incorporate my health and my wellness? When we talk about self-care, so often people who are working, especially if you're working nine to five, right? It's like the idea of taking off. When you're an entrepreneur, you don't even know how to take off. So like, what does take off even mean, right? Is that a thing when I'm running my own business? So then the, uh, the concept of self-care ends up being this far away thing instead of how do you infuse self-care into your everyday life, right? So I talk about this where I say, one of the things that I do at this point is I don't eat lunch. I mean, unless I'm having a lunch meeting, but like I don't eat lunch and um, and, and work at the same time. That's a part of my self-care because at some point I had to tell myself, you you can walk away from this desk for 20 minutes and eat your lunch in peace. You can do that. So like infusing, you know, the things that you want to do, the lifestyle that you want to live, how do you care for yourself? How do you care for your family? All those things and infusing all those things in. So Anyway, I don't want to be the dead horse, but I just wanted to start talking about that because on the back end, I've gotten, you know, people have asked like, okay, well, Jace, what is high performance at high noon? Well, the call is about how you live the life you really want to live, right? And you do that through integrating the things that you, the things that you have to do with the things that you want to do. And hopefully you find more places where those come together. So, um, 
y'all know what it is. It's like the mid-January, right? So this is the time that people start falling off their goals. They start talking about the things that they want to do. Then they start falling off of those things, right? And I'm here to say like, that's not you. If you're here, right? You see yourself as a high performance professional. You see yourself as, a, as you know, somebody who likes to crush your goals. So you ain't falling off your, off your goals, right? But my friend, Andre Gaskin, he calls us the adversity management system. And I think it's so important to talk about this at the top of the year because life keeps on life in, right? So I call a plan B. He calls it the adversity management system. That is his thing, the adversity management system. But I call a plan B. Ultimately, you have a plan, a thing that you are doing for whatever it is that you want to accomplish in your life. If you have a business, you got a business plan. That business plan includes how you're going to market your business. It includes how you're going to operate your business. It includes the finance for your business, right? If you are, are career driven and you are trying to make it to your next level in your career, you have a pathway that you see how you're going to get there. So everywhere that you go, you got something that you want to do. And somewhere in your mind, you have created some form of a pathway to get there. But then like, happens. And we know because I can already tell you if I ask everybody something that they thought that was going to happen by now at the top of the year that hasn't happened is because life, life has happened. Life keeps on life in, right? So how do you manage that? So I say that as a part of your plan, you have to plan for a backup. You have to have a plan B. And the way that I've looked at this for myself as I've thought through like how this has actually helped me is the same way that you create a system for every goal you want to meet, you have to create a system to help catch you when you aren't able to, to hit that target. Because what happens, like how many of us, and you can put like, put a one in the chat if, you, if you're able to, you know, how many of us have ever like started a goal and the first time we don't hit our goal, we don't hit our target, we never come back to it. Like I'm about to go to the gym every day. Then you miss the gym one day and you never go back. You never go back. Like it'll be the whole next year. We'd be like, dang, I had got that membership. I was supposed to be going. I never went. And like the gym is easy, but like how many of us have started a diet, right? I'm gonna start this diet plan. You start the diet, you miss one day on a diet. You mess up one time, you'll never come back. So how do you not just plan for like where you're going, right? But like also how do you plan for when you when you fuck up cuz you you're going to. Right? It, at some point you're going to not hit that target. And if you don't have a plan for when you don't hit that target, you will be the one that starts and then don't ever come back. So how do you stop yourself from being that? And I say, you got a plan with a plan B. I got plan A and I got plan B. It's like, where do I, what is the lowest thing that I can do just to maintain the habit? And why to make, why maintaining the habit is so wildly important. And I mean, wildly important. Maintaining the habit is wildly important in order for you to reach your goals. Cause like, let's really talk about what a habit is, right? Like habits are simply just tied to outcomes. So if you have a good outcome or you have a bad outcome, and I'm gonna use the word good and bad, just to make a contrast, right? Because some ain't, I mean, some ain't really good or bad. Like they're just things that we do. But if you have a good outcome or a bad outcome, no matter what, you're going to be able to tie it to a habit that you are doing. So when you're seeing like success in your business or you're seeing upward trajectory in your career, you have developed a habit that allows for that thing to happen. It's not luck. It's a habit. Somewhere under there, there's a habit that's let you get to that space. Then if you have something that is not good, right? If you have something that is not where you want it to be, it's going to be tied to a habit, a thing that you are consistently doing that is taking you down this road that you don't want to be down. So habits are simply tied to outcomes. And what you want is you want to create the habits that 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 ultimately create the more consistent outcomes that you want. Well, why do you care about the outcomes? Because outcomes are directly tied to lifestyle. What life am I living? Whatever I do every day is my life. It's not some imaginary thing. Whatever I do every day is my life. And if I don't enjoy all of my life, if I feel unfulfilled, if I don't feel like I'm getting where I want to get in life, I can tie that to the things that I'm doing. And I can tie that those out. I mean, I can tie that to my outcomes and I can tie my outcomes to my habits. So it comes down to what, what, whatever you're doing every day is whatever you're doing every day. That's like literally at its most simplest form, however your life is, whatever you do every day is tied to whatever you do every day.
So how do you begin to change those things? And when you've made a decision that you want to change those things, you're going to change your habits. But in order for you to change your habits, right, which is going to lead to different outcomes, which is going to lead to a different lifestyle, in order to get there, one day life is going to happen. And how do you go back to making sure that that's not, that that's not you, right? Because this, this group right here, that's not you. So let me know if this is resonating with you, right? So here's what, here's what, here's what we're going to talk about. Plan B. First of all, most of us start too big and too fast, right? And we've all done this. Oh, I'm about to go. You ain't never fasted a day in your life. And now you're about to do a seven day fast. Your body is looking at you like you crazy. Seven days, you ain't fasted for three hours. You constantly snacking and now you want to do a, a, a seven day. It, it, it's too much. It's too soon. It ain't going to happen. Your body going to be thinking that you're crazy, right? And you can literally apply this to anywhere. You ain't been to the gym in three years, but now you about to go to the gym seven days a week. You about to be in there for two hours a day. You about to crush it. And in 17 days, your body is going to be turned around. Knock it off. Seriously, knock it off. It's never going to happen. So when you set yourself up for this high expectation of something that just isn't going to happen, you're going to fall off one day. One day you went to the gym for two hours and it felt really good. But actually the next day when you woke up, your body was so sore from working out two hours in the gym, you never go back. You never go back. How do you prevent yourself from doing that, right? Like that's really important. And it matters that we think about how we actually set up too big and too fast goals because when we don't see them, we end up living the same life same shit, different day. Y'all heard that term, same shit, SSDD, right? Same thing, same stuff. Excuse me, I'm working on that. I'm not really working on that in my life, y'all. I'm not, it's not even a goal. It's not even a thought. I just, I cuss, I'm sorry. Same thing, different day right? We have lived that life. And then how many, I, I, a few years back, like 2000, I want to say it's like 2017, 2018, I ran a game called the game of real life, <laughs> right? It was a game directly tied to outcomes, but it was a talk back, right? So the first thing that I did after, after playing this game, um, if any of y'all remember that board game, the first thing I did after playing this game was I asked people, how many of you have looked back over the course of 10 years and realized that you really actually haven't made it that far? You ain't even guys, I was going to say drop a one in the chat if that's you, but don't even drop a one in the chat that maybe that hurts. How many of you have looked back and really, really thought that like in 10 years, in five years, five years is a long, in five years, you really actually haven't made significant progress on where you are. Like maybe you got a different job. Maybe you have a different partner. Maybe you have a different title, but like your money ain't the same. You was thinking about investing five years ago and you still ain't invested in nothing today. You was thinking about the vacation that you want to take and you still ain't took that vacation today. You was thinking about the business you wanted to start and like maybe you kind of put it out there, but like you don't have no real revenue coming from that business. You ain't started that business today. Like how often have you sat in the space and looked at how many years it's been and ain't nothing really changed? Not for real. Like when do you get serious? right? So part of that is because we don't plan for the fall off, but the fall off always happens. It always happens. So how do we not plan for the fall off? How have we over year after year after year after year not actually planned for the real life stuff that's going to happen, right? So let's talk about it, a plan B. And I'm going to just give you some of mine and I want to encourage you to think through some of yours because y'all know I like to give our homework, but let me just give you the homework up front. The homework is going to be to start making some plan Bs. That's the homework, right? So I can, let me tell y'all some of my plan Bs. First, I got a meal prep. I think I told y'all this, but if I haven't, I'm because some of these are like my everyday life, right? This is my everyday life. So first of all, I enjoy good food. I don't like to cook every day. I like to host. So in case any of y'all's in Denver, I actually like to host and make fun little treats. I like to do that. But I don't like to cook dinner every day. I'm not lying. Like, I'm not one of the moms who like to get in and, like, cook every day. So what do I do? I, my, one of my things is my kids need to eat whole, healthy meals, right? My kids need to eat at home pretty consistently at the same time. I need to not spend um, money eating out all day, every day. So 
When I put all that together, that means I need to meal prep. Okay, so I meal prep by cooking on one day. I cook on Mondays. Every Monday, I try to cook three meals all at once. So I have leftovers for the whole week. I'm good with leftovers. Some people don't like leftovers. I'm good with leftovers. So I try to cook three meals one day every week. What is my plan B? My plan B is I always start with my largest meal. Why do I start with my largest meal? Because just in case I don't make it through all three, just in case I left an ingredient at the store, just in case I end up being tired, just in case I have a meeting on Monday night and I am not able to cook all three meals, I start with the largest one to give myself extra time. So I start with the largest meal and on any occasion that I'm not able to cook all three of my meals, I immediately go and adjust my calendar to find another block of time that I can finish cooking because if I don't, we'll eat out every night of the week. It, I'm not like, I'm, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to be able to cook Tuesday night and Wednesday night and Thursday. It's not going to happen. I already know it's not going to happen. My life isn't set up that way, nor do I want it to be set up that way. So my plan B is I always start with my largest meal. So in case anything happens, I know I at least have Monday and Tuesday in the bag and I can figure out how to make it up. Clothes, okay? I don't like to pick out clothes every day. And I have little people. I don't like them picking out clothes every day. I don't know if y'all ever had little people trying to pick out clothes. That is a nightmare. So I like to have all my clothes ironed for the week. I like them ironed. I like them in cubbies. My kids have little cubbies that sit inside their closets. This is how I stay organized. Five days a week, they got five clothes already sitting in there. Underwear, socks, t-shirts, shirt, pants. That's sitting in there. I have a little person who then came down here. They knew I was talking about them. How can I help you, little person? I'm live on camera right now. So, lady, it's some trash that he threw up on your carpet. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, I'll finish that after my call. So, did I put her in a kennel? Did okay, that's, thank you so much. That was an amazing, thank you. I can I finish my, can I finish my call now? Life, 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 y'all. <laughs> My dog is thrown up on the carpet in case anyone wants to know what I'm going to do after this call. <laughs> so what do I do? In case I do not get to pull out all of my clothes, all of the clothes for the week, I put all the clothes on the ironing board because I like to have everything needs to be ironed, ready to go, it's done, right? That is That is the easiest thing because I know that when I get up for me to have a smooth morning, all the clothes need to be done. This is how I live my life. But if something happens, what happens if I'm out of town? I, I travel frequently. What happens if I don't come back until Sunday night? So now I don't have time to put together all the clothes and actually get them ironed. So my bare minimum is I need all the clothes pulled out and they just need to be placed on the ironing board. In a perfect world, my ironing board will be put up on Sunday night. I don't even have the ironing board out. But in an imperfect world, when life life's my plan B is all the clothes is just sitting on the ironing board. So at least we don't got to pick them out. I can immediately get to ironing them right quick. There's no thought process. All the clothes need to be picked out and put on the ironing board. I can do that in five minutes. It's going to take me 45 minutes to pick out all the clothes and iron them. So my go-to is the thing I can do in five minutes. Boom, 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 boom. Pick, pick them out, put them on the ironing board. So they're there, Right. What's my plan B for my morning routine? I think I talked about this before because my morning routine, like, first of all, I pray, I meditate, I do gratitude. I like to be fully dressed before I before I go and wake up my kids. I like to have everything ready to go before I wake up my kids. It don't always happen. When it doesn't happen, what's my bare minimum? My, my true morning routine, my personal morning routine takes me in total about 45 minutes. About 20 of those minutes is spent specifically praying, meditating, affirmations. I spend about 20 minutes in that space, quiet to myself. If I don't get to that, where do I cut? I cut and I just go to gratitudes. Me writing three things I'm grateful for takes me about three minutes. The rest of that time is prayer meditation, right? So when I am not able to do prayer meditation, I'm grateful. That's it. And I could do a shorter prayer. I don't know about a shorter meditation. I could do a one minute meditation, right? But that's not my go-to. Like you could set up yours that way. That's not my go-to. My go-to is if I have run out of time, if I'm not able to handle my morning routine the way that is most effective for me, my go-to, my plan B to keep the habit is my three gratitudes. Because again, if you break the habit, if you break the habit, to be honest, if you break the habit more than three times, you're out of there. Like, let's just say using the gym as an example. If you go to the gym every day and you don't go to the gym one time, cool. 
you make it up the next day, good. You don't go to the gym two days in a row, you're going to really be in trouble because by the time you don't go to the gym three days in a row, your habit is, is fractured. It doesn't mean it's completely thrown off, but scientifically your habit is fractured and you may not go back to the gym for quite some time. You may have to go right back into the phase of rebuilding the habit of going back to the gym. So how do you do the bare minimum to keep the habit in order for you to not do that? So I'll tell you what my gym, my gym, um, plan B is my gym plan B is 20, 20, 20, 20 pushups, 20 sit-ups, 20 squats. I only got to do it once. I didn't even got to do three sets. If I'm traveling, if it's late, if I just didn't make it right, um, on Monday, I like to go to the gym. I go to the gym five days a week, Monday through Friday. Uh, but I no, maybe I talked about that in my class, in my other class. Um, Friday one Friday is hard for me because and this is gets into the science of a habit, which I'm not getting into today, but the, in the science of a habit, you have to have a, tr- a, a cue. My cue is picking up my kids from school. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I go to pick them up from school and I immediately go to the gym. So I go to the gym basically at four o'clock. I pick them up at three. I can't let them into the gym until four. That's the gym's rules, right? So I go and we're there about 15 minutes early and then they get in there and I go to, to do my workout. On Friday, I typically don't pick up my kids. They go with their father. So because I don't pick up my kids, I miss the cue. So I don't stop at the same time. I don't go, I don't stop work at the same time. I don't go to the gym at the same time. So typically if I miss a Friday, I'll make it up on a Saturday or a Sunday, but I try not to miss a Friday, but it gets into the habits. If the cue is missing, the habit is missing, but I, I try to go to the gym five days a week. In the event that I can't go, what's the bare minimum to keep the habit? I'm going to do 20 push-ups because I can knock them out anywhere I'm at. 20 push-ups, 20 sit-ups, 20 squats. I even got a backup for the sit-ups because like if I'm at the airport, I could do 20 push-ups and 20 squats. I can't, I'm not going to necessarily do like 20 sit-ups on the floor at the airport, but I can do like 20 standing up ab exercises. But the point is, is that in a very short amount of time, I can make sure that I've moved my body. I can move my body every day so that I don't break the habit. So I don't break the habit, right? What's my, what's the skill? What is the thing that you're building on? So this year I have a skill that I'm building on. I'm building on sales and marketing. That's my skill. Why is that important? Well, because I'm a business owner. If I don't have sales, I don't actually have a business. That's facts. That sucks to hear, but you can have a thing that you like to do. If you don't have sales, you don't have a business. I have a business. So that means I need to be able to sell. Well, I like to improve on my sales skills. I think I offer something valuable. Drop, drop, drop a one in the chat if I've offered something valuable today, hopefully. But I think I like, you know, I like to offer something valuable, right? So I want to improve that skill. So I actually have sales classes this year so far is day 18. This year so far, I've taken two classes specifically on sales. And I have a book specifically on sales that I'm in the process of reading. So I have that. But what is my go-to? I save articles. Because worst case scenario, if I can't get to a a class, if my schedule is so tight, I can't read the book, right? I can read an article. There you go. 110% strengthen those sales sales goals. Like you're in business. If y'all don't know, Manushka's in business. She sells chubby curls. I ain't gonna try and say your slogan. What is it? Make make it chubby. Wait, make it skinny curls chubby. I might, I probably butchered that. Don't pay attention to me, y'all. Drop it in the chat. <laughs> but like you have a business, right? So you got and you, whatever your skill set is, increase your skill set wherever you want to increase it. But building a skill set, especially when you work full time or you do business full time, that's not the easiest thing to do. So how do you keep the habit of continuing to improve on your skill set, right? If you haven't built that into a part of your lifestyle. So I literally have articles that I just saved that I can go and easily pull up so that if I start noticing, dang, it's been a minute and I haven't actually like spent time studying this thing. Like I said, I can pull up an article. I can read an article in three or four minutes. It's going to increase my knowledge on whatever skill set it is that I'm building. So that's my lowest there you go. Educate the natural community one scalp at a time in case y'all want to know <laughs> who Manushka is and what she does. All right. So 
those are some of my plan B's. I'm just dropping out my plan B's, right? Because this comes back to, I had, you know, if you were here last year, I had started off by saying, okay, bet. Why did I start this call? I start this call because a lot of times people say, Jice, how do you do all the things that you do? And I say grace and work-life integration, right? I give myself a lot of grace. I mess up all the time. I don't like to beat myself up at this point. Like I've moved out of the space of beating myself up when I have messed up, but I also don't like to stay in a place of messing up. So I have wanted to see progress in my life. I've wanted to have a lifestyle that I want to have. I want to live the way I want to live. I want to do so unapologetically. So how do I do that? With a lot of grace and with work-life integration. And how do we get tactical about work-life integration? Life keeps on life in. That's so I'm going to just drive that point home. Life is going to keep life in. Something's going to happen. The schedule's going to change. It doesn't matter how many boundaries you try to set, how strict you try to be, something's going to happen. I was mentioning Monday for a reason. On Monday, I'm getting ready to go to the gym. On Monday, while we get ready to walk out, because it was MLK day, right? So my kids didn't have school. So we're getting ready to walk out the door. And what does my son do? My, how old is my son? My five-year-old son, he's five. My five-year-old son who knows better than this in his life, okay? What did he do? He peed on himself. Literally, we're walking out the door and he is holding himself and it is coming down his leg. And I am like, go back and change. And by the time he came back and changed, I had just given up. I gave up. I'm not going. When the gym time didn't pass, I can't get them into the kids' care. I'm going to be charged for them not coming. All the things. I was frustrated, right? So I said, okay, so what do you do? Oh, wait, you know what to go do. I said, don't even worry about it. He changed and I went into my living room and I knocked out 20 push-ups, 20 sit-ups, 20 squats, and I called it a day because now I'm frustrated. I have to reset my state. My day ain't went the way that I wanted it to go. My son didn't pee on himself, which I'm not like, you know, I, that's already irritating. I've been charged money at the gym because I didn't bring them to the kids care on time and I'm frustrated, but I'm not going to break my habit because I got a lifestyle that I live and that style is going, that lifestyle is going to stay intact. So I'm done talking y'all. What's your plan B? Like, what's your plan B? The topic you came in late. What's up, Matthew? You came in late. So today's topic is plan B. That's what today's topic is. Today's topic is life keeps on life in. And what do you do when life keeps on life in? And if you have not planned for life to life, you will absolutely fall off your habits, fall off your outcomes, fall off the lifestyle that you want to live. And you're going to live the same life that you've been living over and over and over again on repeat for the last decade. Was that a good recap, y'all? All All right. So I'm going to open it up for some Q&A. Before I open it up for Q&A or feedback questions, you know, drop your own accountability in here. Like what plan Bs are you doing? What plan Bs are you committed to? How are you going to make sure that you're staying on track, right? It's the top of the year. How are you going to make sure that this year is not like another year? Before I open that up, I want to remind you that if you are interested in working with me, if you want to know more about the Excuse Me While I Live Intentionally program, which is a program that is built on my uh, multi-layer IME framework. That's intention, manifestation, and excellence framework. That framework is for intentional living. I want to encourage you to go ahead and get in contact with me. We can set up an appointment and I can find out more about your goals and learn if this is a pro- if this program is a good fit for you. So feel free to reach out and get in contact with me. Um, I have a few more slots left open for January. Um, and I'll tell you more about that program if you think that is something that you want to learn about. So. Um, thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. I appreciate that. All right. So I'm going to open it up. And now the link is in the chat. <laughs> thank you. Cause y'all looking out. Um, let me know, uh, wh- what are your thoughts? Who's got a plan B for this year? Who's got questions? What questions do you have? Anybody, but not everybody all at once. Let me see. I'm starting to dedicate two hours. Hold on. Let me open up that chat all the way. I'm starting to dedicate two hours, two days every week to sales calls. Okay. Awesome. What's your plan B? Drop that in the chat when you get a chance and I'll, and I'll read that out. Who else? Right. Um, (laughs) she said, um, okay. So, right. So what's the plan B? 
right? What's the plan B? Should you not make your two hours, two days every week? What is the bare minimum that you can do that you know can be effective to continue to move forward your sales process? That's your homework. So think on that and figure that out. And like be intentional about figuring out what's the plan B. Who else? I know all y'all ain't got no plan B. So y'all might as well just come on and start talking about it. What you need to, what, what do you need in a plan B? Okay, I'm staying away from the plan Bs. Just kidding. Honestly, I haven't made one. I just add other plan A's and that's been my problem. Okay, so let's not look at it as a problem, right? Let's just talk about what it, what it is that you need to do at, in a plan B setting, right? So when something isn't, when something hasn't gone the way that you want it to go. And so Matthew, you already said that you came in late. So I won't do like a full recap. You could always um, get in touch with me or you can go back and listen to the replay. But um, what I will say is that it's not necessarily just to make plan A's. That is that actually is actually let me let me back that up. That actually is a problem. And let me just kind of tell you why, right? Because when you have dedicated yourself to doing something and it doesn't go right, if you just jump to the next thing, right? What happens is, is that you build a habit of not having that perseverance and that grit in order for you to keep moving things forward and actually reach the outcomes that you put that thing in place to, to reach. So when you set out to do something, you had an outcome you wanted to get to. Now, yeah, there's more than one way to skin a cat and there's certainly times that you need to pivot. But what we talk, what we're talking about in a space of like developing and building habits so that you can have consistent outcomes and those outcomes create the life that you really want to live. If you have to keep moving what the plan is, right, then the plan, then somewhere in there, either the plan isn't well thought out, either you're not committed to the plan, um, the plan isn't leading to the right outcomes, or you're allowing for life to happen and you're not planning for what happens when life happens so that you can make sure that you are able to make it through that one day, that two days, maybe that week that something is throwing you off and then be intentional about how to get back on track or be intentional about how to maintain the minimum level of what you need to maintain for the habit to stick so that you can get through that part of life so that you can just keep things right on going. Right. And that makes sense even across, you know, something as detrimental as injury or death. Those are the things that get hard to talk about. Somebody in my life that I care about has died and then, right, I stopped. But life literally keeps on happening. I have a woman that's in another group that I'm on. And normally, so I'm a, I'm a part of an accountability group, right? So just to be clear, I don't tell y'all nothing that I don't practice myself. So I'm a, part, I'm a part of an accountability group. In that accountability group, we get on every Monday and we list out the top three to five things that we are going to do. That accountability group will then tag us in the middle of the week to be like, hey, where y'all at with your top three to five, right? And then at the end of the week, they be trying to tap in. Now you know who's on it because if you got a win for the week, you be ready. Look, I hit all three of my goals this week, boom, right? But if you ain't, you kind of disappear like, yeah, right? And so part of the accountability group is one for us to pivot and two for us to actually just be able to say like, I was off I was off track this week. It happens because life keeps on life, right? That's gonna be the theme of 2023. The theme is life keeps on happening. Life keeps on life and what do you do? So in this case, she just had fam a family member that passed away. This just happened um, last week. Her family member passed away. So on this Monday, when she was on the call, you know, she acknowledged it was a tough week for her. She had family coming in. She had been struggling. She said, I don't have five things. I don't have three things. She said, I have one thing. This is the one thing that I'm going to do this week because I need to keep this thing happening, but I also need to take some time to grieve for myself. I also need to take time to be with my family. So everyone gave her love, gave her encouragement, but it was the one thing, right? Like that was the minimum that she knew she was going to do. So let me kind of come back up here. Hold on. Cause now we got a conversation going. Okay. So you say, admittedly, I just been following the money and not my passion. And that's really been a problem. Boom. We could talk about that. So, you know, hit me up offline. Let's talk about that. Jay says, I'm making a list of goals for each month. I'm still visioning for the year. Awesome. So as you're figuring that out, right, and you're thinking about what those outcomes are that you want to have, right, what are the underlying habits that you need to have to do that? When you're creating those habits, start by, cre I mean, don't start with, create the habit, but as a part of that, Jay, create the 
um, create the, the minimum. What's the minimum thing that you need to be able to do in order to make this thing keep going forward, right? So make sure that you're a part of that. So Chris says, because I am reading the power of now, I tend to not think about what shoulda, coulda, woulda, and just address it then and there and regroup. So I never really, wait, hold on. So I never really thought about plan B, but we'll do the homework to come up with that. We'll come up with developing healthy habits, of course. So in the now, so um, in the now, and that's really important because as a part of the plan B, it's not necessarily what you would have, could have, should have. It is addressing the now, right? Like my, my goal to reach this outcome is this. I, in this moment, in the now, I can't do that. So what? how do I make sure that I don't drop it totally? And that's why I started off by talking. We've all been there where we said, I'm about to do this. And we did it once. We never started. Maybe we did it for a week. Maybe we did it for a month. And then we fall off, right? So how do we stop the fall off? That's the whole point of the plan B is to stop from the fall off. Because to be honest, only 8% of people actually really hit their targets and goals. That's a whopping 92% of people really don't actually hit their goals. I don't want that to be y'all. This is a high performance call. You're a high performance professional. You're a high performance executive. You're a high performance entrepreneur. How do you beat the system? How do you beat the 92% of people that can't, that can't manifest their goals in real life? How do you beat that? So this is one of those tools is what is your lowest default, right? And I think I had mentioned before, um, it is, it's one of my favorite quotes and now it's, it's, it's um, escaping me, but James Clear, he talks about, you do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. So your habits are your systems because your habits are the things that you really don't think about that much. So how do you create the lowest level of your habits to still create the outcomes that you want? Kevin says, my goal for the past few weeks was to get 20 businesses signed up to shop BIPOC.com, but I kept coming up short of that goal. So now my goal is to schedule 10 meetings where I can help small business owners go through the sign up form. I love that. So now what's the lowest amount, right? Is 10 the lowest amount? Is 10 the lowest thing that you can do? right? So how do you like, how do you create that? But I love that, right? So you went from 20 businesses to sign up to how can I be more intentional about getting these 10 businesses on? So you brought your increment down to something that you can actually schedule and go through and then make sure that you're hitting that target. And you want to know what, as people get on and they start finding, you know, more opportunities, that's going to spread and you're going to be able to do more. And that's where not starting too fast, too soon, how do we start building up incrementally so that we can, you know, get to where we're going. And look, now you got someone new joining Shop by Pac. There we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let me see. Let me come back. Um, oh, awesome. My goal was to make 5K this month. I've only gotten 3K. But I don't understand. First of all, you're more than halfway there and you still have half the month, right? So it sounds like you're on track for your goals or am I confused? Maybe I'm confused, but it sounds like you've gotten, what is that? 60% of your goal and you have two weeks left in the month. So I think that you could hit and crush your goal actually. But what would be a thing maybe in that space is what is the minimum amount that you need to make in order for you to live and care for your business expenses? right? So you have your personal expenses, you have your business expenses. What's the minimum amount that you need to make? And that's what you default to. So you have like, this is what I want to be make to be crushing it, but I can't make no less than this. Otherwise I'm not living, right? And what you need to make to live probably should include the lifestyle that you want to live. My minimum includes my lifestyle. My minimum is not, I'll tell you that my minimum is not here's what my minimum is not. My minimum is not the bare minimum of what I need to pay my bills. My minimum is what I need to make to live my lifestyle. That's my target every month. I got to make this to actually live how I want to live. Okay. Cause I like to get my nails done. I like to get my hair done. I like to have Papa Do's like probably two to three times a month. Um, like my lifestyle needs, my minimum needs to include my lifestyle. 
Okay, so now you have a target to hit, to reach. So Matthew said, my business comes in. Um, I only have two jobs for the rest of the month, but they're small. So the way my business comes in. Okay, so all that means, Matthew, is that you've got how many more days in this month? I can't do the math. Somebody tell me how many more days we got left in this month. But we have roughly two weeks, right? Something like that left in this month for you to get more than two jobs. So you have, so you got them two jobs. Them two jobs is already on the books. You got two weeks to go get, Thank you. <laughs> Y'all don't tell nobody. I can't do math. We got 13. You got 13 days left to go figure out how to get more than those two jobs. Right? So don't count yourself out. Don't count yourself out. You have 13 days to figure out how to go and get more than them two jobs. So, all right, y'all. Thank y'all for participating with me. Um, remember this call happens every Wednesday at noon Mountain Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, please join me again. If this was helpful, please go ahead and share it out, right? Share it out. I know you can't be the only um, high professional, high performance professional in your circle. So please go ahead and share this out. Again, re uh, remember if you want to get in contact with me, if you want to learn more about my Excuse Me While I Live Intentionally program, this is a work-life integration program that really helps you think about how you get intentional about how you want to live and doing more of what you love. I can help you get there. Very excited to do that. Um, I appreciate y'all and I will see y'all next Wednesday. All right, catch the replay. I'll drop those links. I've been saying that and I've been failing to do that. So consider today's email coming out to drop those links. <laughs> All right, y'all.